It's a bright morning. It's Ramadan. 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The Prophet of mankind, the peace of our hearts and mind, the most generous and kind sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, The one who recites durood, salutation, salawat, salam once upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers ten mercies upon that person, ten of his sins are forgiven and his rank is elevated ten times. Subhanallah, sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad. صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم مرحبا خوش آمديد ووالكم to one and all to another exciting and beautiful episode and سلسلة of this beautiful series known as a bright morning الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله this is the month of mercy the month of forgiveness the month of freedom from the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us amongst those fortunate people who are forgiven in this beautiful month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. Ameen, 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 ya Rabbul Alameen. Alhamdulillah, whatever the case is, every moment in this beautiful month of Ramadan is very, very, very unique, very special, very excellent, subhanallah, because it is filled with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is filled with barakah and blessings from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Today, inshallah, we will be discussing the rights of Muslims, subhanallah. It is uh, something which is important, the respect of a Muslim, the right of a Muslim, because we are Muslims, alhamdulillah, and this is our pehchan, this is our recognition, and Muslims have rights. So, uh, whether it's our neighbor, whether it's our wife, whether it's our children, whether it's our parents, our siblings, our relatives and whoever it is, it is important for us to show respect, adab and fulfill the rights of one another. Subhanallah. So inshallah today very briefly we'll be discussing the rights and the respect of our fellow Muslim brothers and Muslim sisters. Subhanallah, subhanallah. But before we move towards our discussion and our topic, let's make good intentions. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, Niyatul mu'mini khayrun min amali. The intention of a believer is better than his action. The more good intentions you make, the more reward you will attain from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Make good intentions and inshallah, when I hear the name of Allah, I will glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I hear the blessed name of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will recite durood, salutation, salawat, salam upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I hear the blessed name of the awliya kiram, the buzurga and deen, I will say rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha. And inshallah azawajal, Whatever I learn, inshallah, I will try and pass the message on to others as well. I will teach to others as well. And inshallah, azawajal, I will try and act upon it myself and implement it in the lives of those around me as well. Inshallah. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. A fire worshipper used to get his clothes sewn by Sayyidina Shaykh Abu Abdullah Khayyat. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And would give a fake coin each time, which he, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, accepted knowingly. Once in his absence, the apprentice did not accept the fake coin from the fire worshipper. When Sayyidina Shaykh Abu Abdullah Khayyat, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he returned and learned about the situation, he, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, asked the apprentice, Why didn't you take the coin? For many years he has been giving me a fake coin which I always accepted so that he will not give it to any other Muslim. Allah, 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 subhanallah. My dear Islamic brother, did you see this is the beauty and the love and the respect of one another which our pious predecessors had? That, you know, I will be in a loss, that is fine, but nothing must happen to my Muslim brother, subhanallah. And this is how beautiful Islam is, because when a person makes salam and he says, 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So automatically, why is he saying salam? Why is he making that peace? Why is he sending that peace? And indirectly, the message is being sent that you know, you are safe from me. Your wealth is safe from me. Your your family is safe from me. Your belongings are safe from me. Because you are my brother. I am your brother. Alhamdulillah. And a brother doesn't harm another brother. And this is how beautifully these blessed personalities portray this beautiful teaching of Islam. That, you know, I can go through some difficulty, I can be in a situation, but nothing should happen to my brother. No, my brother must be safe, he must be sound, he must be happy. Alhamdulillah. And this is the teachings of Allah and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the teachings which we need to implement in our lifestyle, in our lives as well. I mean, just imagine for how many, for how long, for how many years he might be taking that fake coin. And he knows that he's going in a loss. But just so that, you know, no other Muslim brother should be deceived, no other Muslim brother should be in a difficulty. Today's time we have businesses, we have properties, we have dealings. And we make sure, ma'adallah, that you know, everyone else must be in difficulty, our profit must be fine. And to gain our profit, to gain our belongings, to gain our money, will destroy someone else's lifestyle, will destroy his business, will destroy his profit, anything. Will even close down his business just to make sure that you know, we are prospering, we are safe, we are successful. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demands from us. No, 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 no. A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. As a Muslim, we were supposed to work together and lift the strength of each other, motivate one another, encourage one another, increase his business, you must increase your business, both of you, inshallah, then you will see barakah. How can you expect to see barakat and blessings in your business when your business is based upon the destruction of your brother's business? Huh? or the falling down of your brother's sustenance, or whatever the case is, where are you going to expect to get barakah in that? No, make dua for his business, make dua for your business, and inshallah you will see Allah Ta'ala will grant barakah to both of you. Both of you will inshallah be enjoying, and this is the beautiful teaching of Islam. This is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions to you all. This is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to you all. Subhanallah. And so this, so this is one respect and right of a Muslim. That you know, a person tries to always make sure he is, alhamdulillah, successful. He is on the straight path. Everything is happening good with him and for me as well. You know, make dua for him, make dua for yourself also. Allah must increase both of you. And a Muslim doesn't harm another Muslim by hurting him, uh, destroying him, tarnishing his reputation, disgracing him so that you may become successful. Your things should become better. This is not the act of a Muslim. Some more beautiful rights which you need to keep in mind is parents and zawil arham. They deserve to be treated with the utmost kindness, the utmost adab and respect. But unfortunately in today's time, this is one thing which many of us are lacking. Especially when it comes towards our parents. You know, many people just take the parents for granted. It's as if you know the parents gave birth to them and now they are something which, we, which you don't even want to speak about, you don't even want to meet, you don't even want to look. Astaghfirullah. And this is the understanding of some people, unfortunately, in today's time. Very beautifully, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah has narrated that the beloved and blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, three people will not enter Jannah. One who distresses his parents. Number two, a, the youth. Number three, and the woman who adopts masculine style. Who is it they use? It is mentioned that the use is the person who does not care about his wife or any other mahram woman's indecent behavior with other men. That is, those who have the power to prevent their mother, their wife, their sisters and the young daughters etc. But still do not prevent them from wandering without veil, without parda in the streets, in the marketplaces, in the shopping malls, in the picnic spots, whatever it is as well as those who don't prevent them from talking freely and openly with non-mahram men, the neighbors, the relatives, the employees, the gatekeepers, the drivers, etc. So the person who doesn't prevent these, his mother, his wife, his sister, his young daughters from these kind of people, that person is at the youth and he is deprived of heaven and he is deserving hell. This is something which is very, very common in our in our society today, where you know, the wife will be going 
and uh, she'll be talking to the Namaharam men and she's sitting with the Namaharam men, joking, laughing, and the husband will even be there, he'll be even joining in, he'll be also be laughing, all right? Uh, he'll even speak to his friend about his wife, all right? Or he'll speak to his friend about his friend's wife, and his friend will speak to him, and they're speaking about each other's wives. They are sitting there. The woman as for before folk are sitting there. The friend is looking at that at his wife. He is looking at his friend's wife. What is going through their mind? What are they thinking about? How many filthy things must be going in their mind? This only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows. Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam knows in which direction, in which situation are these people going in. This is not the teachings of Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is not the teaching of the pious predecessors. This is not the teachings of those that follow Islam truly and correctly. Another person which Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the in the hadith that the one who is you know, deprived of heaven is the woman who adopts masculine styles. Unfortunately, today's time you also have this that you look at a person, you have to first think is, is he a boy or is he a girl? Women are wearing, you know, masculine things, they, they cut their hair in that style, the clothes, the dressing, the way they appear, the way of talking, the style of walking, everything else. Mawlana Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azami very beautifully mentioned that applying henna means applying mehndi to the hands and the feet of boys unnecessarily is impermissible. A woman can apply mehndi to her hands and feet, but she will be a sinner if she applies henna and mehndi to the hands or feet of boys. So all these kind of things we need to take into consideration, we need to start thinking, we need to start pondering. The Prophet has mentioned that these people are deprived from heaven, deprived of Jannah. If they use the woman who adopts the masculine style, the one who distresses his parents, all of these people, they are deprived, they will not enter heaven, they will not enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doesn't this make your goosebumps appear? Doesn't it make your hair stand? Doesn't it put shivers down your spine? That you will not be entering Jannah. The whole life you have been learning about the beauties of Jannah, the wonders of Jannah, the excellences of Jannah, the blessings of Jannah, and you didn't know that you were doing those actions which prevented you from entering the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, keep us on the straight path. The respect and the right of the elder brother, subhanAllah. Remember, along with your parents, your other family members, like your brother, your sister, they also deserve respect. They deserve the utmost adab and the utmost respect. After the father, the grandfather and elder brother are closer as the elder brother is a father's substitute. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very beautifully mentioned the right of an elder brother upon his younger brother is like the right which a father has upon his offspring. Subhanallah. This is also another beautiful right and a respect which we need to keep in mind. We have those above us. We have those elder than us. So our, our brother is on the place of our father. Our sisters are on the place of our mothers. We need to respect them. We need to show them adab. We need to show them utmost respect. At the same time, we need to respect those below us. And the elderly brother, he is on the place of the father, so he needs to display those morals, those etiquettes, those characteristics. Because he must know that his younger brother is looking up to him. The sister should know, her younger sister, her younger brother, whatever the case is, they are looking up to me. So I need to be a perfect role model. The brother must think this, the sister must think this. And so both sides it works. The small brother, the small sister, they respect the elder brother, the elder sisters, and likewise the elder sister, the elder brother, they also show the kindness, the shafqat, the karam, and the mercy upon the youngsters. When both sides it's happening, then inshallah you will see there will be barakah, there will be blessings. This is also one of the teachings of Islam. Islam teaches us the respect, the right, and the adab, and the haq of our elder brother as well. Subhanallah. Another beautiful right which is important to learn about is the right of parents towards the children. Or you can say the rights of the children towards the parent. In other words, that the parents need to do good tarbiyah, good upbringing of the children. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very beautifully mentioned that it is better for a person to teach his children manners than to give one sa'a. One saw is approximately four kilograms of grain in charity. Likewise, Nabi Sallallahu also said, No father gave anything to his child better than good manners. So, 
you teach your children these things, you motivate them, you persuade them, you encourage them to do good actions, to to obey Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa teach them good akhlaq, teach them good manners. When you teach the children these things, tomorrow those children will not go against their parents. Tomorrow their child will not disrespect his brother, his sisters. Tomorrow their child will not go on the wrong path. Tomorrow their child will not adopt, you know, masculine or feminine qualities. Tomorrow that son will not become the youth. Because everything he learned from a young age, he saw his parents doing the beautiful teachings of Allah and His beloved Rasul. He saw his parents acting upon Islam. He saw his parents, you know, motivating others to act upon Islam. So when he saw that since a young age, when he grows big, he's also going to do the same thing. He's also going to, inshallah, follow Allah and His beloved Rasul. He's also going to, inshallah, follow Islam. So it is your responsibility to give the proper teachings towards your children so you may protect them from the fire of Jahannam. Protect yourself and you need to protect them as well. No? It's not that you know you only need to protect yourself from the fire of Jahannam. You're going into Jannah, you're letting your children go to Jahannam, Ma'adallah. No, no, you need to protect them. You need to give them the proper teachings of Islam. Allah SWT very beautifully mentions in Surah Tahrim, verse number 6, Allah Ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum naraw wa quduha al-nasu wal hijara. O believers, save yourselves and your family from the fire whose fuel are men and stones. So the Quran is giving you the hukum that save yourself and your family. Not only yourself and not only your family, both of them. Yourself and your family, you need to save everyone from the fire of Jahannam. And which fire? That fire that the fuel is human beings, is men and stones. You know, in today's time when we have fire, we put wood, we put petrol. So the fire of Jahannam, the, the petrol, the fuel, the wood is human beings and stones. Regarding this verse, it is mentioned in Khazan al-Irfan where it says protect yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. He says protect yourselves and your families from the fire of hell by obeying Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By performing ibadah, by refraining from sins, by guiding your family members towards goodness and forbidding them from evils. Amr bil ma'roof wa nahyun anil munkar and by teaching them knowledge and etiquettes. That's how you're going to save them from the fire of Jahannam. Not by teaching them music and songs, not by teaching them how to dress openly in front of other people, not by teaching them how to adopt masculine and feminine styles, not by teaching them how to disrespect the elders, how to disobey their parents. No, 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 no. This is not the teaching of Islam. You need to teach them to obey Allah and His beloved Rasul, teach them ibadat, save them from sins, tell them to do good. Teach them adab, give them knowledge, give them wisdom. Then only you will expect that, yes, now you have done the good tarbiyat and you have fulfilled your duty then, inshallah, saving yourself, protecting yourself and protecting your family members from the fire of Jahannam. Another beautiful right and respect which we need to keep in mind is the respect of our relatives. Generally, I'm speaking. All the relatives need to be treated nicely and excellently. Sayyidina Asim radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned whoever wants a long life, increase in his sustenance and protection from bad death should continue to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and treat his relatives with kindness. Likewise, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned the one who breaks off the relations will not enter heaven, will not enter Jannah. So we need to treat our relatives with kindness, with goodness. But obviously you need to keep in mind that as there are different levels of relations, there are also different levels of treating relatives with kindness. Parents have the greatest status amongst all your relatives. The people who deserve the most kindness, the most respect, the most adab is obviously your, your parents. So all your relatives, you need to treat them with kindness, with adab, with respect, with love, with muhabba. This is also a right upon you for your relatives. Subhanallah, ulama ikram explain regarding the relatives, you know, the Dhil Qurba, these beautiful relations. They have mentioned that Dhil Qurba are those relatives whose relationship is created by means of parental relationship. And they are also called the Raham. There are three categories of them. First, relatives of the father, such as the paternal grandfather and grandmother, the brother and sister of the father, etc. Number two, the relatives of the mother, like the maternal grandfather and grandmother, the brother and sister of the mother, and akhyafi brothers and sisters. What is akhyafi brothers and sisters? Means the stepbrothers and the stepsisters 
because mother is the same but father is different. And third, the relatives of both of the parents such as a real brother and sister, whoever of them has a closer relationship has a greater right. This is one. Second piece of advice which Ulamai Karam gave that there are two categories of relatives. Under one category fall those whom nikah is haram with and they are also called zi raham mahram such as the brother and sister of the father and the mother. Zi raham mahram are such close relatives that if one of them is supposed to be a man and the other a woman so nikah is haram forever between them. These include for example the father, the mother, the son, the daughter, the brother, the sister, the brother and sister of the father and those of the mother, the nephew and the niece, etc. It is further to help them in their hour of need and one not doing so is a sinner. Those relatives with whom nikah is halal, it is permissible, such as the offspring of the paternal and maternal uncles and those of the maternal aunt. It is sunnah e muakkada, that is, it is a strongly advised sunnah and a rich reward earning act to treat them with kindness and with good manners. Also remember that treating all the relatives and even all the Muslims with good manners is essential and hurting their feelings is haram. And the third piece of advice which is mentioned is that the distant in-laws are not included in zirraham. However, some of them are mahram, such as the mother-in-law and the radai mother, the woman who has not given birth to a baby but has suckled it within the age of two and a half years according to the Hijri calendar. And so someone suckled a, a child, a baby, so she becomes the radai mother, the foster mother basically. Some of them are not mahram but have rights. Even neighbors have rights, but these rights are not included in this verse as it refers to Zi Raham and other relatives. The verse is Wabil Walidini Ihsanu Wadil Qurba. So Yadil Qurba, you know, who is being discussed, that was the discussion here regarding the Wil Qurba, regarding the Raham and the respect and the adab which one needs to show towards these relatives. Subhanallah. Another beautiful right and respect which every person should have is the rights of the orphans. Yes, you should show kindness, you should show respect, you should show you know gentleness towards the orphans, towards those who don't have their parents, those who don't have their father, don't have mother, whatever the case is. As very beautifully Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned, the one who strokes an orphan's head merely for the pleasure of Allah will get reward for every hair that he stroked. And the one who does any orphan, boy or girl a favor, I and he will be together in heaven like this. Means these two fingers are meeting each other. Nabi Sallallahu joined two fingers and he mentioned that, you know, I and he will be together in heaven like this. As the two fingers join one another. Subhanallah. And remember that stroking the head of an orphan and providing the miskin with food it removes the hardness of the heart. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who very beautifully mentioned that a man complained about the hardness of his heart. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied and said, stroke the head of an orphan and feed the miskeen. Subhanallah. Likewise Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very beautifully mentioned if a boy is an orphan, stroke his head, bringing the hand to the front and if the father of the child is alive, stroke his head, bringing the hand towards his neck. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Another beautiful right which we need to discuss, especially in today's time, is the right which a husband has towards the wife and the wife has towards the husband. This is also a very beautiful uh, relation between the husband and the wife and it is something which every person needs to understand, needs to know about. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very beautifully mentioned, woman has been created from a rub and you cannot straighten her. If you wish to get benefit from her, you can do so with her crookedness. If you try to straighten her, you will break her and breaking a woman means divorcing her. Allahu Akbar. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very beautifully gave us a teaching that if you try to straighten her, you will break her. Whatever benefits you need from her, take it with the crookedness. And yes, she will do some 
problem there will be ups and downs there will be issues there will be problems whatever the case is sometimes she will do some annoying things whatever it is the husband needs to adopt patience and sabr subhanallah as nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam has mentioned amongst the true believers is also the one who has a nice character and is the most gentle with his wife subhanallah subhanallah so we need to instill this teaching in us as well as a man we need to overlook some things we need to forgive many things we need to let her go in fear of her things yes sometimes the woman folk they also have you know some problem maybe she has some tension she has some stress she has some worry she has some difficulties and so as a man you know you must sometimes overlook her issues overlook her problems and inshallah you will see there will be barakah and blessings in your house in your life in your lifestyle subhanallah subhanallah it is very beautifully mentioned that um, the wife of a person once mixed salt in excess in the food so he got very furious but managed to control his anger thinking that i also make many mistakes if i treated her harshly today due to her mistake allah azza wa jalla might also punish me for my sins on the day of judgment therefore he forgave the mistake of his wife inwardly and in his heart he forgave her after his demise someone saw him in a dream and asked how did allah azza wa jalla treat you he replied that punishment was about to be inflicted upon me due to the abundance of sins when allah azza wa jalla said my bondwoman had mixed excessive salt in food and you had forgiven her mistake i also forgive you today in reward for that subhanallah this is the, the maqam and the status a person overlooks some things inshallah allah azza wa jalla will forgive his mistakes will overlook his mistakes as well subhanallah likewise a wife also needs to show the respect towards the husband as very beautifully nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned and said I swear to the one under whose omnipotence my life is if there are wounds in the entire body of the husband from foot to head which pus and pus mixed blood ooze out from and the woman licks them still she has not fulfilled the right of the husband subhanallah subhanallah so very beautifully islam has given us the teaching that husband needs to look after the wife wife needs to look after the husband parents look after the children children look after the parents brother look after sister and likewise vice versa whatever it is and islam has given us different rights different respects different responsibilities for each and every individual this is the message of islam this is the teaching of allah and his beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam unfortunately we have reached the end of today's silsila and episode and i want everyone to take this message away with you all that inshallah as a muslim i will try and you know maintain all the rights all the respects and inshallah azza wa jal i will try and become a better muslim whoever is deserving of my rights i will give the rights whoever i have a responsibility over inshallah i will fulfill my responsibility and i will act upon the teachings of allah and his beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam these few words we come to the conclusion of today's silsila remember instill the love of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in your heart in your mind this love of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the base of your iman the base of everything you have this love you have everything you lose this love by allah you lose everything we hope to see you soon inshallah tomorrow same time same place a different topic something new something exciting till then assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh sallu alal habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam it's a bright morning it's ramadan it's a bright morning it's ramadan it's a bright morning it's ramadan it's a bright morning it's ramadan